Hey, how's it going, everybody? I thought I'd give a little update on the Skymaster 1.6 scale F5E EDF conversion. Just getting a little inspiration here from Patrol Swiss on cool F5s flying around. Um, so here's the bird. So over the last couple of weeks, I was busy. I was actually out of town for almost a week visiting my parents, but I did get some work actually done, some CAD work done uh, while I was up visiting them. Um, you know how it is hanging out with the parents. It's like they wanted to sit in front of the TV a lot of the day and I'm like, okay, I'll hang out, but I'm going to do some CAD work while we're just sitting here watching TV. So I actually redesigned uh, the ducks. I didn't quite like how the first batch fit. Um, and I was able to smooth out the ducking, the, the curves a little more. And also I didn't, I didn't go quite as big on the intakes before I had really oversized them like 110, 115 FSA, just because they're such long ducks. I didn't want the inlets to choke it off at all, but I said, you know what? I didn't want it to be too big and weird looking. So these are the new ones. They're still over hundred percent, like 105 FSA. And you can see it's basically, I just traced the exact, when I cut the, the intakes, the lips off the intake, um, this was the exact inlet. So I just traced that and it ends up being 105 FSA. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll still end up pedaling this side like I did over here, because what I'll do is before I glue in the real glass ducts, I'll plank them with basswood around here so that they can actually, I can actually sound, add a little, maybe three, three seconds or almost quarter inch intake lip, round that off. So those will, that'll help the intakes breathe a little easier at lower speeds anyway. So anyway, so I was stoked to get these done and printed and, and in place. So I just need to finish these. I'll do probably a, a coat of epoxy on them and then sand them and get them prepped up and release and ready to, to glass. So I need to get some glass in order. And then the rest of the time I spent working on the elevator. That was the big hurdle I needed to cross was getting these elevators figured out. So I finally gave up. I tried getting the bushings to work. Uh, I bought, you know, a reamer and tried to get just the right fit with no slop. And they just ended up being, I still had too much resistance. I just wasn't loving them. So I searched around and tried to get out of sort of the, um, you know, whatever, the, the hole I, I dug myself into with those bushings and said, hey, well, why can't I do bearings? And I decided if I found some low-profile ones, they could probably fit without having to do major fuselage modifications, and I did. So these are 3 8 inch ID, about 3 quarter OD, and I found some uh, K&S tubing that fit them perfectly, and I just 3D printed these little backings that go in here to hold the bearing in. Um from one direction anyways, and they get captured from the other side by the axle and the, the collar that's gonna hold it in. So, anywho, I just had to bore out enough material here carefully and keep everything aligned, and sure enough, they, they drop right in. And, of course, there's the trouble wasn't here, but there's just barely enough room for the bearings to fit in here. Uh, you can see it almost breaks through the top of that plywood. But actually, these need to move down. I, I think I have a little too much anhedral as it is, so these inner holes are going to move down a little bit. And what I'm going to do is cap that uh, plywood pillow block there with some carbon. So I've got some some flat carbon bar. I'm just going to high saw on there. But anyways, you can see how these go in here and, and fit, and it works out pretty well. Um, overall, I'm, I'm pretty stoked on this on this setup. I'm glad to not be dealing with the bushings and any potential. Uh, friction from those and slop or whatever. You can see I've got the actual elevator installed over here so there'll eventually just be a collar that mounts over here to lock it in and really the the bell crank that's going to go here really would probably lock that in pretty well. I, I could probably position it so I wouldn't even need a, a collar out at the end but anyways that main design or redesign is basically done now. And this elevator is installed, and I think it's just a little, I've got about a degree too much anhedral in that. It's not sitting real level right now, but it's just a little too much. So that'll be an easy fix, just to just have to high saw in the top of these holes and then, and then re-bore it down further. So that's easy. Um, anywho, so that's, that's done. I got the, just quickly cleared out, did a first cut on these auxiliary inlets because it makes it easy to get into the back of the fuselage another spot there what else did i do i i after i cut out the big heavy quarter inch ply bulkheads here i uh, glued in these extensions out of 332nd ply so nice and light but it keeps the fuselage nice and stiff back here because this is kind of a 
it's a weak spot through the middle here. Um, so you gotta make sure we don't get any oil canning. So those are those are keeping the fuselage in line here. Uh, other than that, I don't think there was too much else. That actually took a, a lot of time to get these elevators in there without screwing things up. And there were there were a couple redos where I had to fill in holes and re rebore them out. So that just took a lot of time. But I'm stoked to have that done. That was one of the bigger kind of hurdles to get over on this thing. So that's basically it. Um, oh, I also started, you can see here, I've got one of the wing mounts out, so I already popped loose the, the wing mount. It was scary easy to pull that out. Of course, it had the bolts, but once the bolts were out, the uh, you know, there was very little glue holding anything on. And the little bit of glue that was in the back, just uh, when I pried those off, it just peeled the outer layer of plywood off of this super wonderful plywood they supply in Skymaster. It's basically like, I don't know what the the glue they use to hold these together with. You can see where it used to be down there. But I think it's the same stuff that it goes in the back of like post-it notes is how they hold this plywood together. So that's one thing you gotta be careful about is anything that's structural. If you only have it glued to the face of one of these pieces of Skymaster plywood, don't expect to actually stay there and support any load because whatever is glued to the front of these things can just peel off that outer layer. So I'm, I'm gonna be really careful and go through all this stuff and make sure any high stress areas, I'll probably drill little micro holes and um, wick in thin CA just to strengthen it up because I it's really hard to trust any of this wood or just double it up. Like I've already doubled a lot of this up with Midwest plywood. Uh, but yeah, I'm feeling good about that. What else? I guess that's pretty much all the updates. So now I've, I've got to get busy on, sorry, I'm out of focus here. Got to get busy on getting these plugs ready and I've got to design the rest of the um, intake here which will be pretty simple other than I want to incorporate kind of a holder for the uh, my ESC which is probably going to go ESC will probably go about right about here kind of near the CG I want to keep the leads pretty short to the batteries and it's likely that one battery will probably go here in the, in the belly or the I don't know what you call this area I guess it's the forward belly of the plane between the intakes and then it's likely that the other two will go right here below the cockpit in this area. Um, we'll see how the balance all works out. But that's kind of, that's where I mocked everything up with originally and it balanced out pretty good like that. But we'll have to see after, you know, how the weight works out and the balance at the end. Uh, but that's kind of where I plan to, to mount the ESC about right here. And the other thing I need to do right now besides the intake stuff is I need to get the test stand for the fan so I can get uh, get the fan mounted up onto a test stand. I've got my scale over there somewhere. There it is. And um, check the thrust using a couple of these test uh, bifurcated exhaust and mostly just get some runtime on the system. I'll probably start off on 12S and then move up to 18S and just check out Get, get, I want to get runtime on this ESC to make sure it's good. The temperatures stay reasonable. And on the motor. This is a small motor. This uh, The 685 um, 68 length is kind of small for 6,000 watts. I will definitely be putting a heat, a heat sink on there. But uh, I want to get time on it to make sure the temperatures look good and it's not going to totally burn up. So anyways, that's it. Um, I will also, I think I'm also going to make a little video about how I design the intakes in CAD because I've had a few people ask me how I do that. And so I might make a quick video and just kind of do a quick overview of how I design the intakes for the F5, um, which you know, might help someone if they're thinking about doing some CAD work and getting into it. Um, it won't be like a real in-depth tutorial, but it'll just show the, the basic gist of it. So, all right. Well, I'm going to get back to work on this. I'll try to get another update once I get the uh, get some progress. Hopefully, I'll have a test stand together by next time. So, all right. See you later.